Hello, how are you doing? It's another pleasure being here uh, that you're listening to me today. And uh, today I'd like to speak uh, about this topic here, which is all about the order of salvation. You see, so many times we are confused. What's, what's the actual order of how someone can get saved? How can you be able to know that I am saved for sure? How can you be able to know, did I do it right? Did I uh, get saved the right way? Because um, so many people out there, they, they always confuse and always ask themselves, am I really saved? Am I really uh, born again? And what's happening to me? Is it the right thing? Uh, have I done the right thing? Because remember, uh, Jesus, uh, he wrote uh, with his own words, he said that uh, on that day, that, that meaning the day that you'll be there with Jesus, uh, on the judgment day, many will say, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons? Did we not heal the sick and do great and mighty works and many things? And he will tell you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I did not know you. I never knew you. And then you'll wonder, if Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you. Why? What will be the reason why he did not know you? And yet you have been in church. You have been casting out demons. You have been are praying for the sick, you've been doing great and mighty works. Uh, it's because you've never really understood salvation. You see, Jesus will not tell people that, depart from me, I knew you until you did this, or I knew you for two years or three years, or I knew you for this and this period. No, he will tell you, depart from me, I never knew you. Why? Because you have never known salvation. You see, there are so many people who have been raised in church, others... Um, their parents are, are leaders in the church and then within the order of the things in the church, you just think that, okay, fine, maybe I said a certain thing when I was young or maybe a certain specific time I just said this and then I, I think I got saved. And you don't have a proof. You see, salvation is proof. You, you, you can say, this is the time that I got saved. This is the time that I knew the truth. And this is the time that I know uh, I got the certificate to enter heaven because I can be vividly be able to tell Jesus, hey, I know I am saved because this and this and this day, I got to know what salvation is. And I follow the right order and right now I am saved. So that's, that's the, the, the most important thing that I'll be speaking today about this. And uh, you see, salvation has order. Uh, Jesus says that... Uh, that he loves order. Actually, the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. So wherever there's confusion, then God is not there. God is a God of order. God is a God of plan. So there must be plan in everything. Even in the writings of the Bible, there had to be order. Order of how the Bibles were written. Order of every... let, let, Let's check, for example, Luke. Luke, when he was writing uh, the book Luke, let, let, let's just see there. Luke 1.1. 1, 1. I think that will be your opening uh, point here. Luke, when he was writing this book, he actually says, I used order. I did not just write uh, any anyhow. Luke 1, uh, from verse 1 to 3, he was writing to a guy called Theophilus, uh, this, this uh, gospel of Luke. So he says, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order uh, in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It is seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. So you see, even Luke did not write the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke, without order. He, he made sure that he narrated the whole story of Jesus and what he did when he was here in order. It was not like starting with uh, Jesus crucified and then Jesus preaching on someone on the mound and Jesus born. No, there have to be order. Even salvation has order. So if you don't follow the order of salvation, then definitely uh, it is most likely that you're not even saved because there are things that you need to know before you say, Ah, uh, you're saved, all right? So the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, 40, let's go there, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40, it tells us something here about uh, order, 14, 40. 
It says, let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. We have to have order in whatever we are doing, all right? Uh, you see, there are so many places where you go, especially some, some of these modern churches, uh, you find people doing things in a very disorderly way and you ask yourself, is this really godly? What's happening to this? Because even uh, the Bible says uh, God does not really enjoy confusion. Uh, just imagine... Uh, some of these uh, churches that you go, especially in the Pentecostal churches, you will find uh, most of the time you go there and there are pastors maybe praying to people and others are following, uh, they are falling down there. You know, they are, it's like even the ladies, they are, they, their clothes are, uh, you know, it's like they are naked and then there's uh, some ladies who their ministry is just to uh, walk with, uh, with a towel just to, you know, uh, to put on top of the women who are already, um, you know, exposing themselves because of how they are falling. Do you think that's really in the Bible? Is there a place where in the Bible we see such kind of disorder in the church, people doing all... You see, uh, God is not the author of confusion. He needs order in everything. And when you see some things happening, you have to ask yourself, is it really in the Bible? I'm not here to condemn anyone, uh, no one is perfect, but then you have to be very keen because some things, uh, the, the mo most likely I can say they are mostly traditions of, of maybe uh, traditions of men and they are traditions of how you found the church doing things. Actually, this whole thing of falling down and doing this and that, it started in the 1900s and I think uh, you must be very... Uh, 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 you must be very awake about a certain spirit called the uh, Kundalini spirit, which uh, you can just go, just just check on YouTube. It's it's always everywhere. Kundalini, Kundalini spirit, all right, which is uh, li like a false, false Holy Spirit, all right. You just go and check. Just check all over on YouTube, all over on the internet. There is this kind of, it's, a, it's, a, it's a more of an Indian spirit, which is, you know, touching people, falling down, people uh, getting confused, people like having convulsions, uh, all those kind of things. And then if you're not careful, I'm not saying that uh, just God cannot work in miraculous ways, but be very careful because the devil has already gotten into the church. Gone are the days when Satan used to, you know, you, people perceived him out there in the dark with horns and red. You know, now Satan is working even in the church. You see, the Bible says, tells us that there will be deceiving spirits and people teaching doctrines of devils. So you have to be very careful which kind of doctrine you get. If it's not in the Bible, then you have to be very careful. Some of them are Kundalini spirit. So um, Titus 1.5, Titus 1.5, Titus 1.5, it says... For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou should set in order the things that are wanting, and obtain, and obtain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So it's all about order, order, order. I want to show you quite a number of uh, verses talking about order. And uh, you, you see, order literally means some things need to happen before other things need to happen. This needs to happen before this one needs to happen. So if you did not follow a certain order, getting saved, then uh, there must be a problem. So let me just start. I don't want to speak so much about introduction. Let me give you the right order. What is the order of salvation? There are quite a number of things that you need to understand before you get saved. Number one, you need to realize Realize uh, you're lost. All right? You need to realize that you're lost. That's the first thing that you need to do so that before you get saved, you can't just get saved when you don't even know your state right now. You have to realize that you're lost. Uh, in a 2 Corinthians 2.4, uh, the Bible tells us one thing. 2 Corinthians uh, uh, 4 3, sorry, 2 Corinthians 4 3. 2 uh, Corinthians, um, Corinthians uh, 4 verse 3. The Bible tells us, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If the gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are lost. 
So you have to realize that you're lost. Unless you realize, hey, I'm really lost. I need a savior. I need someone to show me the way. I need someone to open my eyes and tell me this is the truth. This is not the truth. Until you realize you're lost, you cannot be saved. All right. Luke 19.10. Luke 19.10. Luke 19 uh, verse 10. We see something about Jesus and how, what he says about people who uh, are lost. 19.10. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So Jesus did not come for the people who are already saved. Jesus did not come for people who are uh, think that they are self-righteous. No, he came for the lost sinners. He came for the people who are lost. And those are the people who need salvation. And that's why sometimes you think people, uh, just imagine someone like Apostle Paul. All the people who saw him uh, persecuting the Christians, doing this and that. And one day, Paul realizes, hey, I've been persecuting the Christians when Jesus uh, uh, meets him on the road to Damascus. And then he tells you, hey, you're lost. You need to come back. You need to realize yourself. And, you know, God, I, I think God uh, used uh, Paul in a really a very powerful way. Just imagine the people who knew Paul persecuting the Christians. And then all of a sudden is a guy who is really powerful speaking the word of God. Think about the Pharisees. Think about all those other religious leaders who are lost with him. And they're thinking and, and even others who are in the church seeing how much and being proud of how much good they have been able to be successful. But someone else can be able to surpass them. Why? Because they're there thinking how righteous they are. You know, Jesus did not come for the perfect people. He came for the lost. He came so that he can change people so that they can be able to understand themselves and to know I have been lost for the longest time period. So if I understand I am lost, then I need a savior. And then the savior comes and then he teaches me what's the gospel. Then I will no longer be lost. So first you have to understand. You realize that you're a sinner and that you're lost. Romans 3.23 he tells us, for all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. All people have sinned. Everyone has sinned and come uh, short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10. There is none righteous. No, not one. There is no one righteous. No, there is no one righteous. The Bible tells us very clear. There is no one righteous. So if you're saying, I think I'm righteous. I think I'm righteous. I think I'm good. You're lying to yourself. You have to come to realization that you're lost. You're lost. All right? You have to realize that you're lost. Let's, let's read uh, Romans 5.12. Romans 5.12. Uh, the Bible tells us, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. By one man, who is this man? Adam, Adam, everyone sinned, everyone sinned. Do you know something, <laughs> a very funny thing that most people don't understand? You will hear people say, oh, don't do that. We are all in the image of God. Hey, don't talk bad. Ag don't, don't say bad against that person. You see that drunkard there or that person who is fornicating or that person who is doing this and that. Don't say bad things about him. We are all in the image of God. No, you're not in the image of God. You're only in the image of God if you're saved. Now, let me tell you something. The Bible tells us in Genesis. Let me, let me read it for you. And I like to quote this quite a number of times so that people can understand that unless you're saved, you're not in the image of God. Stop lying to yourself. Genesis 1, 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish, over the sea and, and all those. So God said, let's make man in our image and in our likeness. Image of God. So how is God? God has three parts. There is a body. Body, soul, and spirit. All right? God has three parts. This is a trinity. So he said, let's make man in our image and our likeness. So three out of three parts. One, one, and one. So this is three out of three parts. But when Adam sinned, the spirit died. The spirit died. All right? 
And I think I've explained this in another video. The spirit died. So once the spirit died, now he had two out of three parts. So one is dead. And the Bible says, until you're born of water, you know, you're born of water and spirit. You can't see the kingdom of God. Born of water, why? When a woman gives birth, water breaks. The spirit, until the spirit is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Why? Because all of us, we are in this image, this image of Adam. Let me read it for you. Genesis 5, Genesis 5, 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image. And he called his name Seth. So now all the children born after Adam were after the image of Adam. Two out of three. And this is why you hear this is called the, the number of man. Why? Number of man. If you divide two divided by three, you get 0. 0.666. This is the number of man. The sinful nature of man. So you're not in the image of God. And until you realize that you're a sinner... You cannot be able to get a savior. You cannot be able to be saved. So you have to understand, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. All right? You have to understand, I am a sinner. Okay? That's really, really important. The book of Isaiah tells us, Isaiah 64, 6. Let's go there and see. It tells us what nature of people we are. Isaiah 40, 46, I mean 64. Isaiah 64, 6, the Bible tells us, but we are all, but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and all, and we do all fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind and, have, uh, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So the Bible tells us that our righteousness is like filthy rags, filthy, filthy rags. All right. Our righteousness is filthy rags to God. There's nothing that we can do to ourselves so that we earn salvation. No matter how much we give in the church, no matter how much we help the poor, no matter how much we try to become decent, we can't, we cannot do anything and win salvation. No, our salvation, our, our goodness is like filthy rags and God is not going to hear us unless we first understand, we realize that we are lost. We cannot be able to get a savior. Number two, we have to hear the gospel. Hear the... All right. Hear the gospel. Now, let me ask you one thing. Do you know the gospel? Have you ever heard about the gospel? I spent almost 30, actually over 30 years... In church, I was I was born in church. I was always a you know a, a choir boy. I was always a Sunday school. I was always there in the church. I I was with the youth and everything because our home, we grew you know we were this kind of church guys you know. My mom used to go to church. My dad used to go to church. All of us used to go to church. But I never one day was able to realize what is the gospel because most of the churches they hardly teach. What is the gospel? They always, they always give you stories about different things. They tell you this, they tell you that, they tell you that, and they tell you, oh, you know, Jesus died. Yeah, he died and, and all that. Fine, we, everybody knows, and we all believe that Jesus died. And very rare that you hear somebody tell you, this is the gospel. This is the main thing of how you're saved. I used to think every day that the only way you can get saved is the pastor calls for an altar call. He says, whoever wants to get saved, come over here. And then you repeat a certain prayer. You're told, just say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Uh, you know, become my Lord and Savior. And, and I used to think this prayer is what saves me. I used to think this prayer, I have to say it very carefully because this is what is saving me. I used to believe in the prayer. And I did this prayer over and over and over. And I think I, I, I've been saved like almost uh, 20 or 10 or 20 different times. I remember there's a time I was just sitting down and I've, I've done maybe something wrong and, and I feel so much bad and I'm asking, I think I, I, I should just tell God now, I, I want to get saved now, the right one, the, the real one. I, I call my mother, I tell her, please pray for me. Now I want to get saved like for real, for real. She prays for me and 
You see, all that confusion, because I believed a prayer saves me, but I literally had not understood the gospel. I had not had the gospel. So you have to hear the gospel. So where do we find the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, all right? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And what does the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 talk about? What does it say? Let's go there. Uh -huh, let's go there. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 1 through 4. It, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. All right? Which I preached unto you. So this gospel, you must hear it preached. Okay? You must hear the gospel preached. All right? The gospel must be preached to you. All right? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received. So you have to receive the gospel. Receive. You have to receive the gospel. All right? There are various things that you need to do. You have to receive the gospel. And wherein you stand, you stand in the gospel. Stand in the gospel. You have to stand in the gospel, all right? So you have to hear the gospel preached. You have to receive the gospel. You have to stand in the gospel, all right? And then, by which also you are saved. So you are saved by the gospel. Saved by the gospel, all right? So you, you are saved by the gospel. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. let's go on. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, so you have to keep in memory. Keep in memory. You're keeping what in memory? The gospel. It has to be here. Keeping it in memory, that's your certificate. The Bible says, I, I, I will write all my laws into your hearts. I have to write all your all, all the laws. God has said he, he writes all the laws that uh, he wants us to hear in us. No longer now do we have them in a certain place. Now they are written in us, all right? So you have to keep in memory. Keep in memory what the gospel is. Uh -huh. And then what I preached unto you, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So you don't have to believe in vain. You have to believe truthfully. Believe truthfully. All right? You have to believe truthfully, all right? And then, something else here. Uh -huh. mm. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. So Paul is saying, I'm not delivering to you another gospel. I'm giving you the gospel which I also received. So Paul also received this gospel, all right? So is what he's giving. So you see, he also received the gospel, all right? So Paul is not giving another gospel. He's giving what he already received from Jesus Christ. For I delivered unto you first of all which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins. Now, there's something here you have to understand. How that Christ died. How did Jesus die? How did Jesus die? This is a cross here. How did Jesus die? He died a very, very, very bloody death. A very, very, very bloody death. All right? How that Christ died. This is how Christ died. He shed his blood. He shed his blood. How? All right? How? How that Christ died. How did Christ die? He died a very, very bloody death. And until you realize how Jesus died, then you don't have the gospel. Just imagine if Jesus, uh, those um, uh, Romans, they could have said, okay, Let's imagine it was a time where there is electrocution. They say now, since uh, we want to kill Jesus, we'll electrocute him. Or we will, we will uh, drown him in uh, water. Or we will choke him to death. And there is no blood, then there could be no salvation. Why? Because the blood of Jesus is very important. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. We could not have been forgiven without this blood. This is how Jesus died. And for those people who keep on saying, no, don't look at the blood. Just say this or do this or do this or do this. Then they are lying to you. This is what saves you. This blood. There's no other precious blood. 
Romans 3.25, in whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through the blood. This blood is the propitiation. Propitiation means the act of appeasing wrath. The wrath of God was so much until this blood is the one which appeased the wrath of God because of the sin, the nature of sin. God wanted to destroy man, but because of this blood. So this is how you saved. Uh -huh. Let's see there. For I deliver unto you first of all, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, there's something here. There are five points. Five points on how you... Two, three, four, and five. Five points. Number one is Christ died. Died. That's point number one. You have to understand. For our sins. You have to understand. It was for our sins. He was buried. Rose again. According. Two scriptures. According to the scriptures. So these five points are really, really important to understanding what the gospel is. Let me write here the gospel. All right. So this is the gospel. You first have to hear the gospel preached. You have to receive the gospel. You have to stand in the gospel. You have to be saved by the gospel. You have to keep in memory the gospel. You have to believe truthfully in the gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried, rose again according to the scriptures. Let me explain this. Why do you have to believe that Christ died? If you believe that Christ died, it means that you believe God the Son, Jesus Christ. He was God manifest in the flesh. So God the Son died. Literally, he died. So you believe that? Good. Then he did not just die for no reason. He died for your sins. It was just not an ordinary death. He died for your sins. He was buried. Why buried? Because all the sins were taken down with him. He became he became the sin for us. You see, the Bible says that Jesus was the, uh, uh, was the unleavened bread. What is unleavened bread? He was sinless. The sinless Christ was buried where sinners should be. And he was the sinless person being buried down there. So he took off all our sins down there. So you have to believe he was buried. He rose again. Why? Rising again, he rose by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you believe that he rose, the Holy Spirit rose him. God, the Holy Spirit, rose him. So you believe in the Holy Spirit. And you believe that the same Holy Spirit who rose Jesus will also rise you up at the day of rapture or at the time that you die. According to the scriptures, why is it important according to the scriptures? Actually, according to the scriptures is, is, is said two times. Two times, according to the scriptures. Why? Because the scripture is the word of God. God gave the scriptures. He said, let there be this, let there be this, this will happen, this one will happen. So if you believe the scriptures, then you believe the word of God. And you believe, if you believe the word of God, then it means you believe God, the Father. You believe everything that he has inspired. The Bible is inspired by him. So when you believe this, this, you're saved. And all this is just to explain how it happened. So all this is just to explain how Jesus died. He died for you, for your sins. So when you believe this, you hear the gospel, then you get saved, all right? Let me also explain. Sorry, let me, let me, let me take it in the order. Let me take it in the order so that you can understand. So you have to hear the gospel. Number three, you have to do something. To understand, understand the gospel. So you have to understand the gospel. 
That's another very, very important thing that you have to do. Why understanding? Why is understanding important? Because if you don't understand, then all these things you'll be doing the way I, I did it for 30 years. Thinking I, this one saved me. Thinking because of saying this prayer, I will say. Thinking because of doing this. Thinking because if you don't understand this whole aspect, you see, let me explain to you something. The scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sadducees, they were the same guy who were responsible to teach, to, 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 to teaching the word of God, what prophet Isaiah said, what Zechariah said, all those kind. And they were the ones who used to translate and also make copies of the word of God. But Pharisees and Sadducees, after all that time, I think they had even, uh, uh, they had the word of God here in their, in their, uh, in their minds. For so long, they could even maybe narrate everything that Prophet Isaiah said. But, one very funny thing. These guys, Jesus always rebuked them. Actually, the biggest rebukes were sent to the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the scribes. Why? Because they had heard, but they had never understood the gospel. You see, something that you have understood, it goes straight to the heart. Something that you don't understand then it will not go into the heart. You will believe from your, from your head, not from believing from the heart. Jesus says he wants you to believe from the heart. He doesn't want you to believe from your head. All right? So that is a very good example. Hmm? Let, let's see Matthew 13, 13. Matthew 13, 13. Let's see something here. Um, Jesus was asked, why do you always speak in parables? And, and he, he had to explain something because these people don't understand. And he wants to show you and make you know this. Matthew 13, 13 to around 15. Therefore, I speak, therefore, speak I to them in parables because they, they seeing not and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. Jesus is saying, these fellas, I speak to them in parables because they don't, they, they don't see, they don't hear, they don't even understand, all right? And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing they shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed lest any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So the only way you can be converted is if you understand the gospel. Jesus always said, these people don't understand anything. They, it, it just gets into through this ear to the other one. They don't understand. That's why I speak to them in parables like little children. I tell them, when this happened, there was this man who did so that they can try to comprehend. Because the gospel, unless you understand, you can read the gospel all the time, but you'll never get saved until you understand what happens. All right. That's really, 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 really important. Let's let's see Mark 7:14. Mark 7:14. Let's see what the Bible says here. Mark 7:14. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Jesus saying, please, hearken unto me. Every one of you, please, understand. Understanding, understand. Why is Jesus insisting about understanding? I want you to understand. I need you to understand. There's even a time that Jesus is asking people, are you not understanding my speech? Are you not... Understanding is very important. Let's, let's see John 8, 43. John 8, 43. Eh? Jesus is, is telling these people, please understand these things. Eh? John 8, 43. Hmm? Why, why, do you, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Hmm? He's telling them, hey, 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 please, you need to understand my speech. You need to understand what I'm telling you. You need to understand what is being spoken about. Because without understanding, then you are lost. You are lost like a golf ball in high wheat. Let's see, Matthew 15, 8. Matthew 15, 8. We see something that Jesus was telling, uh, who was rebuking the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Matthew 15, 8 around nine 
Jesus was saying, these people, he was talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and these teachers of the law and the religious leaders. He was telling them this. These people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. They use their mouth, all right? They draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me, but in vain they do worship me. They worship me in vain for nothing, for no, with no benefit. In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You see, there is something we call the commandments of men. The commandments of men, I don't have a lot of room here. Commandments of men. Doctrines. Or commandments. Of men. These doctrines or commandments of men, they are taught mostly in churches which don't understand the gospel. Have you ever gone to a church and then you see the pastor really misquoting the Bible? You see, the Bible says that in the own Bible, in, you see, the Bible explains itself. It actually tells you that there is nothing of private, of private interpretation in the Bible. So when you go to a church and you hear the, uh, this kind of uh, preachers or people who say, you see, there are so many things which are really deep, deep in the word of God that you have to get an interpreter. Run away from that church. The Bible says there is nothing in the Bible, in the scriptures, which is of private, private interpretation, which needs like someone to dissect it in a different way. No, we only do Bible study so that we can open up, we can let... All the words be seen. This word, this word, this word. We can be able to understand. We can know where the verses are. We can know the truth. But nothing of the Bible is of private interpretation. So when you see somebody trying to complicate, they are complicating the Bible to make you not understand. So that you can always rely on them uh, as, if they are, uh, as if they are the priest. They are the mediator between you and God. No. There is only one mediator between you and Christ. And, and God, that is the man Jesus Christ. Only one mediator. So if they try to make you not understand the Bible, then run away from that church. You rather just watch videos on YouTube or something or preachers from YouTube. And uh, they, they can help you to understand the Bible. Read the Bible on your own. Mm? Or get some other fellas, two, three, four, and just, you know, study the Bible together. You don't have to go to a church which is complicating the Bible. You have to understand all right. So these guys are teaching doctrines of men. They only confess Jesus from their lips, from their mouth, but their hearts are really far from God. So it's really, really important to understand the gospel. The other thing is, the other thing is you have to believe. All right. Believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. So believing the gospel is very, very important for you to be able to be saved. Why is God always talking about believe? Believing, believing, believing. Believing, believing, believe. Before I even explain that, let me show you a few verses which is talking about believing so that you can know about believing and how important is belief to God. Galatians 3.22. Galatians 3.22. The Bible talks a lot about believing. Galatians 3:22, the Bible says, "But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ may be given to them that believe." The promise the promise by faith of Jesus Christ may be given to them that believe. You have to believe to receive the promise. He does not tell you to say any word or to do anything. It's by the finished work on the cross, you don't need to do anything. You just need to believe, accept and believe. Galatians 3.26. Galatians 3.26. For, for you all are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. You are children. You, are, you become children of God by faith, by faith in Christ Jesus. You just need to believe. Believing, believing and faith is the same word. How do you believe? By trusting. You can Use the word trust or faith. They all mean the same thing. Trusting, faith, believing. You'll see so many places in the Bible say, believe, believe. Whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Believing. There's no place in the Bible which talks about doing anything else. It's just about believing. Believe and you shall be saved. All right? 
at 8.37. And the funny thing about this verse is that it is only in King James Bible. This, this verse, you'll never find it in any other, uh, uh, any other Bible, especially NIV. You will not find it there. And that's why I always tell people, please keep off this kind of Bibles. Eh? Only have the King James Version Bible. The others, they are really corrupted and edited and they have been changed. It's, it's just a business. They want to tell you what you want to hear. The NIV and these other shady, shady Bibles, the new, new Bibles, what they do is that they are owned by some guys who just want to make money and who want to corrupt the word of God. And remember, Revelation says, whosoever will add anything in this, I will also add all the words written all the troubles written in this Bible, I will add on him. And whoever uh, removes anything from this Bible, I will also remove his part from the tree of life. So those guys who are removing verses from the Bible, you rather stay away from them. Stay away from those versions of the Bible and use the right Bible. You can check. This, this verse is not anywhere in NIV or these other new, new Bibles. It's not there. Matthew 15, 8, 8 to 9. Let's check there. Uh, sorry, sorry. Acts. I beg your pardon. Acts 8.37. Acts 8.37. This, this is when Philip was uh, with the Ethiopian eunuch. And then the Ethiopian eunuch, uh, uh, Acts, you know, he wants to be saved. He wants to be saved. And then Philip, uh, let, let me just read it. And Philip said, if you believe with all thine heart, you may. And that and uh, he answered and said, be I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see, he's talking about believing. He wanted to be saved. The reason these guys, they have removed this verse is because of this. Let me, let me just explain. Verse 36 says, And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And then now, they, they, most of these Bibles, they jump. Verse 37, which talks about believing. Believe in your heart. All right, And then they jumped to the verse 38, which just says, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went both into water, both Philip and the eunuch, and they baptized. So they, they want to show you the only way to be saved is getting in water and being baptized. That's, that's the only way. And if you read these perverted uh, Bibles, NIVs, that is what is going to happen. You will never know the truth. You will think you are saved by being baptized. All right? It's by believing. Believing is very important. Really very important. Uh, Mark 10.5. Mark. Mark 10.5. Mark. Uh, Mark 10.5. Let me show you. Mark, Mark, Mark. Where are you? Mark 10.5. And Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. All right? For the... For the hardness of your heart. Why is Jesus talking about the hardness of the heart? Because when you harden your heart and you say, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to harden my heart. I'm going to be very, you know, I don't want to hear. I don't want to open my heart. It's like when you're about to get into a relationship with someone and you're still doubting them. You're like, I don't want to open my heart to this person. I don't know them very well. Jesus says, open your heart, receive, understand. Do you know that feeling that you feel when you're just newly in love and you've just met someone and then all of a sudden you think, you just see everything is perfect and you open your heart and you're like, now you're really in my heart and how you feel. But think about a relationship whereby you're together, but you, you love from the head. You know, I'm, I'm still skeptical. It's not really love. It's, it's not from the heart. Jesus wants to be loved from the heart. He wants you to believe in what he did for you. From the heart, that's what he wants you to, to do. All right? Mark 16, 14. Mark 16, 14. Mm, 16, 14. It says, Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, as they sat and met, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of their heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. So these guys are still not believing. There are some guys who are still not believing. And he says, please don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. You have to believe from your heart. Believing is from the heart. You don't believe from doing anything. You don't believe from anywhere else, but you believe from the heart. 
All right? You have to believe from the heart. All right? Let's see Luke. Luke uh, 24. 24-25. Luke 24-25. Uh, then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. So he's saying, you, you are so slow to believe, you know. You're so slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. The prophets already told you. The Son of Man will come. You have already been told that this and this will happen. You have already read it. But why you harden in your heart? You might have understood, but you have, you're not yet believing. You might have seen and say, oh yeah, he, he's coming, but I don't want to believe. If you don't believe, then that message is not dissected, is not inside you. The only way a message can get inside you is if you believe and you believe from the heart. You see, the heart is here, the brain is here. The worst thing, the worst mistake of life, the worst, worst mistake of life is to miss heaven by 18 inches. I call it missing heaven by 18 inches. <laughs> you may wonder how. You believe from your head and not your heart. Only 18 inches make you miss heaven. Just imagine how terrible that can be. Really terrible. John, John 12:40. John 12, 40. John 12, 40. Uh, the Bible says, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted, and I should heal them. You see? They should see with their eyes and understand with their hearts and be converted. When you, when you hear, you understand, you believe, you're converted. That's the old, the old way of saying be saved. Converted. You're converted only when you understand and you believe. You hear. You realize you're lost. You hear the gospel. You understand the gospel. Then you believe the gospel. When you do that now, you're saved. There's no other way that you can be able to be saved. John 14.1. John 14.1. 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Jesus is saying, if you believe in God, you believe what the prophet said, then why not believe in me? I told you that in heaven there are many mansions. Believe me. I told you that I'm going to do a great thing in your life. Believe me. I told you that I'm going to save you. Believe me. I gave you the gospel and told you if you believe in the gospel, you're going to be saved. Believe. Just believe. Put it in your heart. Because the only way you can be saved is by believing. You cannot be saved by uh, doing anything. You see, people will rather do something than believe. People will rather sit down and say, nah, 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 I don't want to hear this. I just want to, you know, what can I be able to do? Is there something that I can do to earn my way to heaven? No, there's nothing. All that you need is believe in the gospel. Hear the gospel. Realize your loss here. Understand and believe. That's all you need to do. You don't need to do all these things that I've spoken over and over. And I said how much of a lost person I've been. Imagine going to church over 30 years and still going to hell. Imagine going to church all those years and still going to hell. And telling God, Jesus, but I, I used to sing in the choir. But Jesus, see, I, I used to give tithe. Jesus, see, I, I used to do all these things. And then he asked you, did you, did you believe the gospel? But I thought I did this. No, I did not tell you to do anything. Did you? The Bible says the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved is the power of God. Until you come to the cross, you can never be saved. You can't be saved from doing this and this and this and this. And opening up yourself to thinking that I, I know, I know I've done. No, it's nothing that you can do. To save yourself. You cannot buy salvation. You cannot bribe the pastor to give you salvation. You cannot do anything to earn yourself salvation. You come here to the cross of Jesus Christ and that's where you're going to be saved by believing the gospel. Believing the gospel. All right. Romans 10, 8. Let's go there. Romans 10, 8. Romans 10, verse 8. 
It says, but what saith it? The world, the, the word is nigh, uh, is nigh thee. The, the Bible says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. He's saying, the word of God is near to you. It is near every day. It is near. What we preach, it is always near. Salvation is as near as you could ever think. It is near as just one, one thought and, and, and it's done. You're saved. You're saved from hell. Just imagine going to hell because you just did not believe. <laughs> you just said, no, nah, I don't want to believe. I, I don't want to believe. No. And then you go, Phew. All the way to hell because you said, ah, no, I'm so proud. Ah, Jesus can't give it for free. No, <laughs> this guy, no, 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 no. I think, I think there's something he did. I have to buy my salvation. I have to do something. I have to come, you know, I have to give well. I, these pastors, they, no, you can't give me salvation for free. No, I have to buy. I have to, I have to give something. I have to do this. I have to go and, uh, you know, they have to see. How can Jesus give us for free? <laughs> Let me tell you, the salvation is free. And if you're thinking you want to buy it, then you're going to buy your own salvation. You will have saved yourself. You see, most people, they save themselves. And that's why they think they can lose their, the salvation of God. When you see somebody saying, you can lose your salvation, then they, they gave themselves their salvation by trusting in something that they do rather than trusting in what God did, Jesus did, the finished work at the cross. If you don't believe in the finished work of the cross, then you believe in something else and you're lost. You're lost, totally lost, so much lost. And you'll be wondering why, how comes? But Jesus, I gave a lot of money in the church. I built the church. You see like what the Muslim do, the, the, the Islamic religions, they believe that if somebody has money and they build a mosque, uh, they will be in more favor with Allah. But let me tell you, <laughs> I don't want to get into this, but it's a lie, a big lie, a big lie, a big lie, a big lie. There's no, and those people who try to say, you see, Allah, Jesus, you see, Buddha, whatever, you see, all religions are one. No, no, they are not one. You see, we all believe in the same God. No, we don't believe in the same God. They believe in the same God, but we don't believe in the same God. The God that we believe it's a very different God. It's an all-loving God, all-caring God who, give, who gave his only begotten son to die. To die, all right? So this other God who needs things, give me this so that you can be saved. That's a different God. Do this, do this, do this, do this. No, that's, that's a different God. And that is the God of this world. And you already know who he is, Satan. All right? Ephesians 4.18 Ephesians 4.18, let's go there. Ephesians uh, 4, verse 18, the Bible says, mm, Having the understanding, having the understanding darkened, and being alienated from the life of, of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Your heart can be very blind, do you know? You can be blind in the heart. You be so blind that you don't even understand what's happening. You be so blind that you can't see. It's just by trusting and then you go to heaven. Just by trusting, hear, realize. But you're so proud that, ah, no, no, I don't want to hear the gospel. I don't want to hear it. Please believe. Don't be blind. Don't let your heart be blind. All right? Second Corinthians 4, 3 to 6. Hmm? Let's go back there. I'd already spoken about this, but let's go back there. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, 3 to 6. All right. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. All right. If the gospel is hidden, it is hidden to those who are lost. In whom the God of this world, who is the God of this world? The, the little G God, eh? In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. You see, Satan can really blind you so much. Can really make you, no, you have to be seen. You can't just take something which is for free. You can take it for free. You have to do something. He can blind you and show you, <laughs> I want to give you this. No, pastor. No, no, no. You can't tell me I'd be saved for free. I have to do something. 
Yeah? Have to do this and this. Listen to verse, uh, verse 5. For we preach not ourselves. We preach not ourselves. But Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves your servants for Jesus sake. Verse 6. For God who has commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. I think this, this verse cannot be even more powerful than this. It's really clear and precise. We are not preaching our things. We are preaching this. We're not preaching, give, give us something. No, 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 no. The Bible says, as long as you have food to eat and clothes to wear, don't worry about anything else. You see, the world today has taught us, you have to, you know, you have to push your career. You know, you have to be a career man, career woman, push, push, work from eight to five, eight to five, do evening classes, do, you see, what they are trying to do is to take you away from understanding and reading the word of God. What's the purpose of being, uh, of being in the earth? If, if the only thing that you do, you see. I teach business so much. Eh? I teach people on how to make money. Now, let me, let me explain it in a different way. And I always tell people one thing. As you make money in business, you have to understand one simple thing. That you have a life to live. You have things to do. You have family to watch. You have this and this to do. But if your life is all about make, 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 make money, run, 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 then you'll miss a lot. Because from zero to 25 years, what are you doing? You're, you're in school, you, you, you have high energy, you have energy, you have uh, the time, but then you have no money, you're broke, zero to 25 years. Then after that, 25 years to around 55, 60, 60 years, what happens? You're working, you're making a lot of money, you're really energetic, so you have a lot of energy, you have a lot of money, but then you have no time, all right? The first one, the only thing that you did not have is money. This one, you have no time. You're really busy running up and down. The other one, after 55 or 60 years till you die, you have two things as well. You have a lot of time. You have a lot of money if you have worked well. But then you have no energy. Then what is life? Then you die and nobody remembers you and all your things are gone. And you have wasted all your life. You have never heard the gospel. Not even one day. You have never heard the gospel one day. Just because you are running to make money and you're running to... You see, the God of this world makes you chase after something that you can lose. Why not chase after something that you can never lose, which is called the gospel? Yes, it's good to make money. We have to live. But don't be so much blinded by running after things which are perishable. Put your riches where moth and rust cannot pick them up. That is in heaven. As long as you eat and you dress and you have something for your family, forget about all these things. Enjoy your life with other people. Do whatever you can do. Reach out to other people and tell them the gospel. Tell them Jesus loves you. You know Jesus loves you. You know this one. You know, you, you see, that's, that's what Jesus wanted. And even the Bible tells us that it, Jesus, God, I, I think it's in his eye, in, in Isaiah, if I'm not wrong. He does not want us to live in houses which are next to each other. I know we are all crowded in the city. I'm also in the city. But why did Jesus want us to live in the villages and other different places where we can be able to grow our crops, we can be able to milk cows, we can be able to sit down and watch the wonderful works of God, how God has created the mountains, the world, the birds singing and everything. And then we can glorify God and we say, wow, really there is a God in heaven. Look at that, that stream of water. Look at this. Look at this mountain. There is really a God in heaven. You can milk your cows. You can do this and that. And you live in the village and you... But now, what has devil, Satan, done to us? He has concentrated all of us in the city. All of us in the city. You live in a house on top of another house and another house and another house. And you're there thinking, oh, I don't have rent. I don't have this. And you're there having no food to eat. And you left the village just because you're confused and you wanted to go and make money and more and more and more money. And when you wake up in the morning, you go to the town center, you see buildings and you see the works of men. And you glorify and say, wow, that man really made a great thing. Look at that train. Look at that plane. You're glorifying what man has done, but you never think anything about God. So it's really important, really important to hear the gospel. Really important to understand why you were created in the first place. Why God created you in the first place. Why God took his time to bring you the gospel. Why 
you're a sinner. You have to realize that you're lost. Anytime you're running up and down, do you ever sit down and say, for sure, I'm really lost. I'm really lost. Let's check the last verse. Hebrews 10, 22. Hebrews. Hebrews 10, 22. Mm -hmm. 22 to around 23. Let's see what the Bible says. Let us draw near with true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us draw near to God. We draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. There's another video that I did called The Assurance of Salvation. And I've explained how you can be able to know how assured you are. You can just check in, uh, in my videos and you can be able to see how assured you are. And how you can know for sure I am saved and I'm assured. And in verse 23 it says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. God has given you a promise. And he can never lie. God is not man that he can lie. Is not man that he can tell you something which is not true. He's told you that I will save you and he will fulfill his word. He has told you that believe in the gospel and you'll be saved. And he doesn't mix his words. God is not man that he can lie. If, if even to date he's still fulfilling the promise he made to Abraham, that his seed will be like the sand of the sea and the stars of the sky, no matter how much Israel, they really ran away from him. I, I, there's this verse in Matthew which says, Jesus says, I've, I've longed to gather you, Israel. Like a chicken gathers his, his, his chicks. But you're not willing. You're not willing. You, you see, and he's, God is still keeping that promise. He says, I will not break this promise. I'll not break this promise. Even when they went to Egypt, they stayed there 400 years. God still remembered. He said, I made a promise with these guys. And I, I will no, not break this promise because I, I'm not a promise breaker. And if he says that he'll give you salvation when you believe the gospel, then he means it. And he says that we are all sinners. There's no big sin than another sin. We are all sinners. So if you believe in him and you believe the gospel, you will be saved. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. This is the gospel found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Do you believe the gospel? Do you believe that uh, you're saved? Do you, have you understood this? And if you understand it, then it means you're saved. If you understand this, then it means you're good and right with God. Please be saved because a time is coming that you'll not be able to hear this. And a time is coming when nobody will tell you the truth. And this is the only thing which can be able to help you. God bless you. Have a great time. Keep on watching. I always post videos every day. Please keep watching and God will bless you.